Just keep our eyes closed, our hands lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. He's worthy of praise, he's worthy of glory, he's worthy of honor. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's mighty in power, he's mighty in humility, he's mighty in humbleness, and he's mighty through the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day, Father, you've made for us. Thank you, Father God, for all you're about to do this day. That the Spirit of God will move upon us with signs and wonders to follow. So we thank you, Father God. Today, Father, we honour you, Father, and give you the praise, the honour and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And all God's people said... Amen. All God's people said what? Amen. God's people said what? Amen. 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 Look at one another and say, I love you in the name of Jesus. You turn around to someone saying, I love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good you love your wives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated for a few minutes in the mighty name of Jesus. I cannot work without a microphone in my hand. Amen. These things are all right, but I don't feel comfortable unless I've got a microphone in my hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sorry about that, Pastor, but that's the way it is. Amen. I'm honoured to be here, and I thank uh, Pastor Rumi and Sister uh, Pastor Zarina for inviting me and the church. Amen. Amen. It's been a long time, and I've waited a long time to be here. Amen. Amen. Long, 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 long time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm here nevertheless, and delay is not what? Denial. Amen? Amen? Just because God delays things, it doesn't mean, say, he's not got it in hand. That's right, Pastor Lunger, isn't it? Amen? Amen. Delay is not denial. Amen? Amen? He's frightened to death, I'm going to say something. Amen? Amen. He's shivering in his boots there. Amen? Amen. Do I say it or do I not say it? I don't know. I'm not sure. Amen? I've got a secret. Do I tell you a secret? Amen? Shall I tell you a secret? Amen. You've got to tell me off for it later on, but I don't care. Amen? Because I'm used to being told off, amen? But Pastor Lunga, I love you to bits, amen? Pastor Michael, love you to bits. Pastor Michael has now come along to help me in the church, amen? And he's a great asset. He goes to another church, but he's in that sort of stage where he's, he's, he's going to leave and come with us in the name of Jesus, and we're blessed to have him. And Pastor Mike, where have you been, amen? You didn't come to our conference, amen? 
Hallelujah. And Pastor Ruth, it's nice to see you again, darling. Amen. Hallelujah. But Pastor Romy, I'm disgusted by you. You didn't come to our conference. Amen. <laughs> If it's a question of finances, we'll pay for you to come down, amen? We'll hire the coach for you and pay it for you, amen? We just want to see you there, amen? And we want to see your lovely worship band singing. They're, they're incredible, amen? And for young folks, they are doing an incredibly wonderful job, amen? You should be so proud of each and every one of them in the name of Jesus, amen? And your wife sings with such passion, amen? She's laughing all the time. And that young lady, she's a bundle of energy in the back there, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many, how many are inspired by the word of God? Amen. How many are inspired by the word of God? Amen. Just one person or all of you? Amen. We just had a month where we had our conference. We had uh, Bishop Zeblon from South Africa come over for a whole month. He stayed for a whole month. And Michael put him up for a whole month in the name of Jesus. He's now gone home, but he's left us with some things that we need to do in the church and some things that we need to discuss in the church because the church has got to grow. You know, our church is only small like yourself, but you know what? Good things come in small packages. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't decry yourself just because you've got a small church. God likes small churches. Amen. Paul preached at small churches, amen? amen. Paul, Paul didn't preach at big churches, he preached at small house fellowships. So there's no big meetings, no thousands of people, only Jesus had thousands of people, but the rest of them had small meetings. So don't decry small churches. They are little fires everywhere. And you get a lot of little fires, you're going to have one big fire in the name of Jesus, amen? And God is in the, in the business of building churches. He didn't say a big church, he said churches, amen? Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, uh, Pastor Zarina asked me to a scripture what I was going to speak about. I just told you a scripture. I didn't tell her what I was going to speak about because I think that's very personal. But what I've, I've asked her to speak on is Ezekiel chapter 47 in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you've got your Bibles here, let's turn to the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 in the name of Jesus. I want to talk about the anointing of God upon our lives. Amen. How many people want the anointing? None of you. None of you want to be anointed. Who wants the anointing? Amen. Who wants the anointing? Amen. So Pastor Lunga doesn't want it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's fine. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to take the mickey out of him all day. Amen. Hallelujah. But praise God. But he knows me and I love him to bits. He's like my brother. And, I, and, and I, you, know how, you know how you dislike your brother? Your siblings get on your nerves and you want to kick him out. But he's my brother in Christ. Amen. And I love him to bits in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So the anointing is part of our life. If you're not a part of the anointing, you're really not part of God. Amen? You must crave the anointing with all that you have. Every fibre of your being, you must crave the anointing. You must say, don't pass me by. Amen? Blind Bartimaeus craved the anointing and he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. It's not that he just wanted to be healed. He wanted something else from Jesus. Amen? He wanted something else that only Jesus could provide. And only Jesus can provide the anointing for you. I can't do it for you. Only Jesus can do it. I can be a carrier, but I can't give it to you. Amen. I can pass it on to you, but it's up to God to give it to you. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's just close your eyes, pray for a few minutes. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this word you give me today, Father. That I've been dwelling on this word for about three or four weeks now. And I pray, Father, every word I speak will just hit the hearts and the minds of those who are here to hear it in Jesus' name. Say amen. 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 The anointing. The anointing comes when you dedicate your life to Jesus. And I'm not saying to ideology or theology or some sort of doctrine, but when you dedicate your life to Jesus, amen? Jesus is not a doctrine. Jesus is not an ideology. Jesus is not a theology. Jesus is a person, amen? He is a factual, real person, amen? And he carried the anointing upon him. And wherever you go, if you recognize Jesus being real, forget the theology side of it, forget the ideology and uh, the doctrine, forget all those things for the moment. Just re rely on the, the anointing of Christ, amen? The disciples were not men of learned value. They were men just simply honest men. But who do they meet on the way? Jesus. Amen. And they discussed for three years, they spent with Jesus, and they discussed things about the anointing upon them. And as when Jesus died and rose, and, and rose again, the anointing was fulfilled in the presence of those people that the disciples met. 
So you can read the Bible to the end of the end of the Bible, back and forth a dozen times. But it doesn't mean to say you're going to be anointing. Amen? Amen. Reading will not anoint you. And reading will give you knowledge. Re reading will give you a lot of explanations about things, but it will not give you the anointing. You say, I'll get the anointing by reading the Bible. Well, there are a lot of scholars out there who are not anointed. Amen? Anointing doesn't come by reading the Bible. The anointing comes by reaching out to the Holy Spirit and saying, Holy Spirit, I want you to anoint me. And if the Holy Spirit wills, he will do that. Amen? Yeah. Anointing is how you feel about Jesus. And when you touch Jesus Christ and the anointing comes upon you, then that's part passed on to someone else. Amen. It's like a disease. It passes on to someone else and God knows that it's contagious. Amen. If you smile at someone, what happens? Do they smile back at you? Normally they'll smile back at you and that's contagious. Amen. If you frown at someone, you, they'll usually frown back at you. Contagious. Amen. And the anointing is, is contagious. It can catch fire. Amen. Say hallelujah. And in Ezekiel chapter 47, we're going to talk about four steps to the anointing. Four steps that you need to do to get the anointing. How many, how many people in this room have ever been scuba diving? Hands up if you've ever been a scuba diver. Ever been, in, ever, ever been swimming? Who's ever been swimming? None of you swim. Hands up if you swim. You swim. Hands up if you swim. I swim. Okay. Hands up if you've, if you've ever been scuba diving. Do you know what scuba diving is? It means going under the water with a mark and all the other things that go with it. Amen? And it means going under the water to somewhere where you've never been before. Amen? It takes a certain um, sense of faith in the equipment that you have to go scuba diving. And when I first started scuba diving, I was all right in breathing. We breathe normally one worth breath after another. We don't think about breathing. But when you go scuba diving, they say, can you breathe? I say, yeah, of course I can. So I put the mask on. Now I get into the water. Now said put your head below the water and I tried to breathe normally and I couldn't breathe normally I ran out of breath very very quickly and they pulled me out and they said okay now stop breathing and just go one two three breathe very slowly so I got under water again I started to breathe very slowly and slowly but surely I got used to it and of course then the mask took over and the breathing apparatus took over and I started to to enjoy it and swim where the fishes are amen hallelujah now I became a scuba diver which means I can dive down to about 150 feet below the surface if I need to but scuba diving is something else. I needed to go what we call deeper and deeper. And when they took me out, I was all right in the swimming pool where they taught me the, 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 the fundamentals, the rudiments of it in the swimming pool. But when they decided to take me out on a boat three miles out to sea in the middle of the, middle of the ocean, I thought, this is a different story. Amen? And they set me on the boat and they said, now we want you to go over the side, backwards. And I thought, I've never done this before. So anyway, I went over the side backwards and I started to, to breathe, to inhale and puff up. And all of a sudden I felt myself floating on the surface of the water. Because what I'd forgot to do was exhale, which allows the body to sink down. As I exhaled, the body started to sink to the bottom of the ocean. And I started to sit on the bottom and started to breathe as they told me to breathe. But you know what? I could never learn to dive in shallow water. I could never learn to dive in water that's below my knees. You cannot learn to dive below water, below your waist. The only way you'll learn to dive is when water comes up above your head. Amen? That's the only place you'll learn to dive and how to swim underwater. You can't do it. Amen? The book of Ezekiel. Have we got the scripture up there? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, verse, chapter 47, verse 1. Now he brought him back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from the temple under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me round on the outside to the outer gate that faces east. And there was water running out of the side, right side. And when the man went out to the east with a line in it, his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought them through the waters, the waters, the water came up to my ankles. Could we carry on, please? Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The waters came up to my knees. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me here through the water, and the water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep, water which one must swim that could not be crossed. Then he said to me, Son of man, I've seen this. And he brought me out and returned me to the banks of the river. Amen. That's the scripture. We might as well go home, because that's the scripture we're going we're to meditate upon right now in the name of Jesus. But what you understand, there's four principles to the anointing, four steps to the anointing of God upon your life, and you must take each one of them separately. You cannot take a baby and throw a baby into six foot of water and expect that baby to swim. That baby may float on the top of the water, but it's certainly not going to swim. Amen? You can't take a baby Christian and put them straight into the ministry. Why, why can't you do that? Because they're not equipped for the job. They don't know how to breathe properly. They don't know how to speak properly. They don't know how to explain things properly. And things have to happen in order because God is a God of what? Order. Amen? He wants things in order. People say, well, my church is all over the place. Then your church needs to get itself in order in the name of Jesus. Our church is in order. Amen? Your church is in order. You have a set place and a set time for everything. And say, well, well that's too organized. Well, God is organized. Amen? Amen. God is organized. And we must get ourselves together to pr uh, pursue the gospel, the gospel of Christ. Amen? Amen. But it says it quite clearly. He says he measured out 1,000 cubits up to his ankles. Can we have the last bit of scripture, please? The first bit of scripture. The first one, thank you. And it brought me up to my ankles. Most Christians crave the anointing, but most of them are paddling about in shallow waters. Most of them are paddling about not knowing what to do, where to go, how to do it. But you know what? God wants to take you further and further and further into the kingdom of God. He wants you to take you further and further into things that you want to know. Not theology, even though that's good. Not ideology and not doctrine, but the anointing of God. And here we have the anointing that God wants you to have. You think you're anointed because you get up here and you give a testimony one day. You get up, think up here and you, and you, you preach a message for five minutes. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I can do this. And, and you go out and you want to be like Benny Hinn, see people slain in the spirit. It's not going to happen because you're still practicing. You're still in the shallow end of your life, the shallow end of your ministry. You think, what can I do next? Start to look to God and say, God, he's the author and finisher of what? My faith. Amen? When you have faith to believe that God will move you from river to river to deeper and deeper water, you cannot learn how to scuba dive in one foot of water. It's an impossibility. And in one foot of water, you can walk very easily. A lot of Christians are walking through their Christian life. Oh, it's easy being a Christian. Let me tell you, I disagree totally. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, is to be a Christian. Amen? Because the devil comes against you. Amen? The devil wants to destroy you. Not only the devil, but people want to destroy you. And the people that want to destroy you are usually your closest family, in the name of Jesus. Amen? Your work colleagues, those people you see on a day-to-day -day basis, not necessarily a stranger out there in the street, but the people who are closest to you come against you and say this, this, this and why do you want to go to church? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? The biggest people that come against me in my life are my three sons, amen? My three sons who love me dearly, but they say to me Dad, we're coming to see you Sunday Oh, you go to church on a Sunday, can't you take a Sunday off for us? I say no You want to come and see me, see me Sunday night but I'm not having Sunday morning off in the name of Jesus, amen? amen. You have to stand by, your, stand by what you believe I'm no longer one who wants to paddle in the shallow ground, in the shallow waters of my life. I don't want to do that because God has allowed me now to preach all over the world. Next year I'm going to Nairobi. Next year I'm going to India. God has opened doors of opportunity for me where I need to go. Why? Because he's taken me deeper and deeper in the things of God. Amen. Say hallelujah. God allows you, providing you, first of all, you've got to paddle. You've got to paddle a little bit. And when they put on that diving equipment for me, it was heavy. And I walked about in the shallow end, it was still heavy. Then they took me down about another few feet, and it got, and it's still heavy. Then I got further down to waist, it was still heavy. I said, I can't keep carrying this. And then all of a sudden, he said, now go under the water. And the minute I entered under the water, you know what? That tank became as light as air. 
that tank on my back, I could not feel it anymore because the water had lifted the burden from me. Amen? The water had lifted that burden from me. And let me tell you, Jesus is the water of life. And when you go through situations, he lifts the burden from you. Amen? He takes the burden up from you that you can walk free. Amen? And I found when I started to scuba dive, the weight was no longer applicable to what I wanted. I could actually swim under the water without any worry about the weight. No longer was I worried about the weight. And as a Christian now, I'm no longer about the weight of what I carry because I know Jesus is my burden bearer. Say hallelujah. God is your burden bearer. And when you learn to start to get in the deep end of God, God carries your burden so it becomes light. Amen. The walk is hard, but the burden is light in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he said he brought me again. The man measured out and he brought me up to... uh, to my, my knees in water. Up to your knees is all right. If you want to paddle, do you enjoy going down the seaside, girls? Do you enjoy going down the seaside? Do you enjoy paddling in the water? Do you enjoy walking about in the water? Because it's quite easy to walk about when, your water, when the water's up to your ankles and up to your knees. There's no pressure. You're just enjoying it. Someone comes along and splashes you. You think, don't splash me, I might get wet. What are you in the water for if you don't want to get wet? Amen? If you don't want to get wet, don't go in the water. If you don't want to be anointed, don't go into the anointing. Amen? If you don't want the pressures that God puts upon you, do not go into the ministry in the name of Jesus. I did not want to be a pastor of a church. It was the last thing I ever wanted to do in this world. Amen. But you know what? God took me into pastorship. Why? He put me into the shallow end first. Amen. He put me where I could walk in my ankles. And I thought pastorship is easy for the first six months. For the first six months, it was fine. Amen. No longer a problem. I thought, this is good. I only have to work on a Sunday. But I didn't realise I was in the shallow end. I was in the honeymoon of my life. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. It's like marriage. Marriage is a lovely institution. But who wants to be an institution? Amen. Hallelujah. And marriage, you get married to someone, she looks beautiful. On the day you get married to her, he gets married, she gets married to him. He looks handsome. He hasn't, he's shaved, his hair is nice, wearing a lovely suit. He looks immaculate the day you get married to him. She looks beautiful, all the makeup on, all the hair done, the lovely wedding gown, beautiful. That's on the day of the wedding. Then two weeks later, two weeks later, Pastor Roman, reality hits the ground, amen? When she turns around and sees this man who looks so handsome, Two weeks ago, now he's got two grays, two, two weeks of fuzz around his face. He's picking his nose, he's scratching his bum, he's doing all sorts of things. And you think, oh my God, have I married that? And then the husband turns around to the wife, who no longer, eight o'clock in the morning, no makeup, <laughs> no wedding dress, nothing to look at, amen? And he turns around and says, oh my God, did I marry that? Yes, you married that, amen? But you're blessed, amen? Amen. Because marriage is an institution. Marriage is a good thing. Amen? But when you're on a honeymoon, you're in the shallow end of your life. You're in the shallow end of a relationship. And as you go through that marriage, you get deeper and deeper. The love gets stronger and stronger. It doesn't dissipate. It gets stronger. And that woman who looked beautiful on the altar, she starts to get more beautiful as you spend time with her. Amen? Amen? Even though she might look not look the same, she is more beautiful in the spirit. Amen. That person, you turn around, oh my Lord, amen. You look at your wedding photograph, that's not the woman I married. No, it's not. She's now better than she ever was before. Amen. Your wife is far more beautiful now than when you married her. Amen. The physical appearance is nothing. It's the spiritual appearance that's more important. And it's the same with the anointing. You can paddle around in the shallow end for the rest of your life and say, oh Lord, I just want more. Then start to wade out even deeper. Start to go out deeper and deeper and deeper. Up to your knees and you'll start to find that the pressure of the water starts to get a little bit worse. It starts to get a little bit stronger. All of a sudden, you can walk about. When it goes out to your knees, you're now going to push. Push through the water with your knees. And then all of a sudden, God wants you to take you out a little bit further. He wants you to take you right up to your waist. Right up to here. And as you struggle to push through the water, 
You've lost a, you're playing with a ball in the water and the ball floats away and you've got to struggle to get to that water. You've got to start to push against the tide. And I'll tell you what, as Christians, we have to push against the tide of uncertainty in our life. We have to push against the devil who wants to destroy us. Push and push and push. P-U-S-A. Pray until something happens. Amen. And we push until we get to where we need. All of a sudden, you get to a point where you, you're now not above the waist. You've now gone up to here. You think, how far can I go? I go, oh, I'm having trouble breathing. Oh, I'm, if I get too deep, I can't swim. Then relax. Because God, God will never take you any further than you want to go. Amen? Amen? God will never do any more than what he can, you can bear. Amen? Amen? God will never do any more than what you can stand in the name of Jesus. Amen? I sometimes wonder why God put me in misery. Because he knows what I can stand. Amen? He knows how far my patience will go. He knows how far to take me in the name of Jesus. All of a sudden, in the ministry, you find yourself up to your neck. Right above here, don't you, Pastor Lunga? Up to your neck in problems in the church. Don't you, Pastor Mike? Up to your neck with problems, money, finances, anointing, people complaining about your preaching, people complaining about this, and all of a sudden, you're above your level. Amen? And you know what? When that happens... The burden becomes light. It starts to lift from your shoulders and you say, oh Lord, here I am, use me. And all of a sudden the anointing hits you like a thunder wave. It hits you like a thunderbolt. You think, now I know why I'm here. And when you go out to meetings and you start speaking and you wonder why God put you in the shallow end in the first place. Because in the shallow end you learn. Amen? In the knee area you learn. Up to your waist you learn. But when you start to go above your there, that's when God starts to teach you, amen, and teaching is different from learning, amen, you're learning, God is teaching you now, amen, God is teaching you something about the ministry that you need to be in, all of us want the anointing, if you don't want the anointing, you should not be in church, amen, you should not, ever not want the anointing, the anointing is something you should crave with all your heart, amen, the disciples craved the anointing, Teach us how to pray, they said. Teach us how to pray. The prophets of old would love to be in your shoes right now. You know, Ezekiel and um, Daniel would all love to be in your shoes right now because they did not see the glory of God. We see the glory of God in our lives right now in the name of Jesus. And when you look at people, you, see them, you know what? You know why they see the glory of God? Because Jesus already risen, amen? In those days, he hadn't risen. Now he has risen. And we are see the glory of God upon your life. You see the glory of God upon other people and use the anointing for your best efforts, amen use the anointing to captivate souls for Jesus, use the anointing you might say, well I pray for people nothing happens, you don't know that in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. I pray for many people in different parts of the world and seen God do miracles beyond miracles and I've seen God not do miracles but I've walked away and he's produced a miracle after I've left, why does he do that? because he doesn't want me to see what he can do amen, because he said to, he said to Abraham, shall I hide from him. Shall I hide what I'm going to do? Amen. God sometimes hides what he wants to do. I prayed with a young lady in India about a few years ago. And this young lady, she's about 14, she didn't go to school, she's off school, she could not walk. She was in bed ridden, she could not walk. I don't know how long she'd been in bed for a long, long time. And her parents asked me to go down there and pray for her. I went down there, I knelt by her bedside, I simply prayed for her. I walked away, nothing happened. Nothing, not a thing happened. Everyone expected a miracle. It didn't happen. I walked away. Two weeks later, I get a phone call from the pastor. He said, you know what, pastor? He said, that little girl you pray for, him, after you left, the day, the day after you left, she got up and walked. Amen? Why? Because it's not me who's glorified. It's God who's glorified. Amen? We give God the glory. Amen? We don't ask for any glory for ourselves. It says, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord God is risen upon who? You, amen? amen? Upon you, upon us, amen? We all share in the glory of God. Each and every one of us shares in that glory. When, uh, when Luna got married, I share in his joy, amen? I share in his, his glory. I share in it, amen? And we must share in each other. We must learn to love one another, in one another, amen? And through one another. What you do affects me, amen? And what I do affects you, amen? And the anointing will affect each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Who wants the anointing? Who wants the anointing? Stick your hands up if you want the anointing. Amen? Because the anointing, you should desire it with all your hearts. 
all your mind and all your soul in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. A few years ago, in 1995, I was invited by Pastor Benny Hinn to go on the platform with him. And what happened was, we were going to a conference down in Norwich, and there were going to be 25,000 people at this meeting. And I'm just a little old pastor running a little church, even smaller than it is now, in Portsmouth. Nothing special, nothing great. All of a sudden, I get a phone call. Someone on the end of the phone, it was one of Benny Hinn's staff. He says, uh, it's Benny Hinn Ministries here. Uh, pastor Benny Hinn, we'd like you to come on the platform with him. And I thought, Benny Hinn doesn't even know me from Adam. Never met him before. I wouldn't know him for Pastor Ministry. Anyway, I said, okay, if this is true, then you get Pastor Benny Hinn to phone me up personally, I'll believe him. I didn't know at this point in time God was going to anoint me for his service. I didn't know, I had no idea. All I was doing, just carry on, I was in the shallow end. In the shallow end, maybe up to my knees. I didn't know God was going to take me deeper and deeper and deeper. Three days later, I get a phone call. Pastor Benny Hinn on the end of the line. He said, Pastor, he said, I hear you don't believe my staff. He didn't have to tell me who he was, I recognised the voice immediately. I said, that's true. I said, I didn't recognise your voice. I said, I didn't, I didn't believe you. He said, well, I'm quite assure you. He said, I want you to come and minister me on the platform down in Norwich. He said, I'll send you a ticket. It'll be with you in a few days. I said, OK, fine. I put the phone down. Going down to the conference, we took a, seat, uh, a coach down there, 55 people in the coach. We went down, and uh, the rest of the church went one way. I went another up in the hospitality suite. I stood there, and I didn't realise God was taking me deeper and deeper and deeper. I didn't know how deep to this point. I went up to the hospitality room, and there I'm standing, and there's Jerry Savelle. Anyone heard of Jerry Savelle? Jerry Savelle, John Francis, and a few other people who are great men of God were there, all in this room. And I'm in this room. This is no word of a lie, Pastor Romy. I've got a second-hand suit on, second-hand shoes, second-hand shirt, Second-hand tie, everything is bought from a charity shop, amen, because I didn't have any money. But you know what? God doesn't care about what you're dressed. He doesn't care about what you wear. He's interested in the heart. A heart after David. Anyway, I stood in the corner, like little Jack Horner, on my own. All these great men of God were over there, and I recognised them. And Benny Ian came over. He said to me, he asked me who I was, and I told him who I was. He said, oh, yeah, you're the one who didn't believe me. I said, that's correct. He said, what are you doing over here? I said, well, I feel a, I feel a bit out of it. He said, I, I, I don't really know those guys. He said, let me tell you, young man. He said, they're as much worried about you as you are about them. They don't know who you are. You don't know who they are. He said, go and join them. So there I go in my second-hand suit, second-hand shoes, everything second-hand. I walked up to these great men of God, and I stood there, and I conversed with them. I didn't know God was taking me deeper and deeper and deeper. Amen? Yeah. Deeper and deeper. And as you get along with those great men of God, I promise you, something is contagious. Amen? Amen. Something happens in your life if you're willing to go that little bit further. I could have stood back and said, no, I, I, I don't deserve it. You know what? I deserve everything God does for me. Amen? And you deserve everything God does for you. You deserve more than what you want. Amen? Amen. You think, oh, I'll just put up with that. I'll just put up with a small church. You don't have to put up with a small church. Amen. You don't have to put up in second-hand clothes. You don't have to put up with it because the anointing of God will bring you riches, spiritual riches, beyond your wildest comprehension. Amen. And as I spoke with these guys, I realised these are great men of God, but you know what? They're just ordinary men with the same frailties, the same burdens that each and every one of us has. We went down into the football ground. There are 25,000 people there. Benny Hinn had gone somewhere. I don't know where he'd gone, but he'd gone. We walked down with all these guys. And I sat next to John Francis, and Jerry Savell was just in the front, not in, right, right in front of me, but to one side. And I sat there, and the crowd, the music was fantastic. God was taking me deeper and deeper and deeper. I felt the anointing of God just so flowing over me like a river. All of a sudden, that's for about an hour, this worship was going on, incredible worship. All of a sudden, it changed. The atmosphere changed. Something changed in the atmosphere, and I could feel it in my body. God was taking me deeper and deeper. I was now up to here. 
the anointing up to here, not overflowing, but up to here. All of a sudden, Benny Hinn came on from the back. He raised his hands. All of a sudden, I was in over my water, over my head. I was in over my head. I just, I just floated in this cloud of excellency, expectation. This cloud. I was enveloped. I was over, out of my depth, if you like. I was far beyond my comprehension. Theology couldn't come into it. Ideology, doctrine couldn't come in. Something changed in my life at that point in time. And he came on, he raised his hands and started to worship God. The anointing just hit me like a thunder wave. It just took my breath away. Like going into cold water. (gasps) It took my breath away. I didn't know what to do with my life. I just knew at that point in time I was changing. I was no longer in the shallow end of my Christian walk. I was now above swimming. But you know what? The burden became lighter and lighter and lighter. And the more you give in to God, the the burden gets lighter and lighter and lighter. I don't say it goes away completely. It doesn't. It's just there, but it gets easier to carry. Amen? Amen. God is such a good God. All the time. All the time. I started to minister with Pastor Benny on the platform. I was in a different level. My Christian walk had taken a whole new meaning. I was now like Ezekiel. I'd gone into a river, which I was unable to walk in. I had to swim. I had to swim with the current of the Holy Ghost, amen? And when you learn to swim with the current of the Holy Ghost, I promise you, things will change in your life. I can guarantee you, the minute you give in, God starts to anoint you, amen? David had a heart after God. He gave in to Samuel. He gave in, but Saul rebelled. Amen? The minute you rebel, God walks away. Not from you, but from the anointing you could have. Oh, I could have done this and I could have done that. I know many pastors, many, many pastors who are running churches, but they're not anointed. They're running churches, but no anointing. Running churches... Nothing in their life. Just go to church, come home. Go to church, come home. That's not right. When you go to church, it should be changing you and the people that you're concerned with. Amen? It should be changing your church from glory to glory to glory. When we start to realise the anointing is up to you to receive it. God gives it, you must receive it by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up, please, in Jesus' name. How long have we got, Pastor Rumi? How long? What time do you finish at? All right, are we? Seven o'clock, all right. (laughs) Hallelujah. Could I have the choir up here, please? Could I have the choir up here, please? Can we have the words, hallelujah, please, a couple of times? Song, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Let me tell you now, the anointing of God is in this place this morning. The anointing of God is here right now. I want you to start to open your heart and your mind. Right now, open your hearts. Don't look at me. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I'm of no importance, but I'm important to God. Amen? Amen. In my world, in my own life, I'm not, very much, I'm not of importance. But to God, like our sister said, I'm a vessel in the hands of the Father. Amen? And God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, as he said. In the name of Jesus, I'm here to tell you right now, the deeper you go, the more of the anointing you get. You say, well, I've had enough, I've had enough, I've had enough. I can never have enough of the anointing. I can never have enough of the anointing of God upon our lives. So if we could start singing, young lady, could you start playing hallelujah? Just the one word, hallelujah, that's all we need. Amen. Let's just close your eyes and lift up our voice. Hallelujah. I just leave for a minute please in the name of Jesus let's stay in this point of worship right now 
Let's keep our eyes closed. Let's just keep our eyes closed. If you girls can go and sit down for a minute, please, while I minister in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just play something in the background there. Gently. The Spirit of God is upon me to preach the gospel of good news. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to pray for those who need prayer today. If you need prayer, then I'm going to ask you to step forward right now where you are. Just step forward to the front if you want me to pray with you in the name of Jesus. If you have a prayer for anything you want, then just come forward right now. God wants to anoint you and appoint you for his service. So if you feel you need prayer, then just step from where you are. Take a bold step and say, Lord, I need prayer. Let's not be hindered by our own pride. Let's not be hindered by people around us. Let's not be hindered by those who think they're so righteous they don't need prayer. All of us need prayer at some point in the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands. Don't be shy. Please step forward. Just step forward. God is here to anoint you right now. The anointing of God is in this place. I feel a sense and a power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. you've been going through has come to an end. The anointing of God is upon your life. It brings an end to all sufferings. God is your anchor. God is your fortress. Your sufferings have come to an end. The problems you've had last year, and I'm talking about not this year, but the year before, have come to an end. God has seen your strife and your troubles. He's seen the heartache and the problems. God is restoring the years of the locust of the He's restoring them back to you in the name of Jesus. Take it right now. Take a word from the Lord this year. The end of this year is going to be better than the start of this year. The end of this year, God is going to raise you up to where you need to be. In Jesus' name, take it right now. Take it right now. Hallelujah. 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 Young man, have more confidence in yourself. God is anointed you. 
hold of it. Years have been bullied her over. Years have been downtrodden her over. Take your place. You should now just stand up and take your place. In the name of Jesus. out your bubble very shortly. There's going to be a bubble of joy that's going to burst from you. There's going to be a bubble of tongues that you've never spoken before. God is breaking something new through you. You're about to give birth to a new experience in the name of Jesus. A spiritual experience that you could never understand or even think about or even imagine that God could use you. That God is going to use you in such a way that he's asking you to break out the bubble like a chicken breaks out the egg. The chicken has to do the pecking on the inside. You need to start breaking out. God won't do it for you. He needs you to break out yourself. Spontaneous joy, spontaneous worship, spontaneous laughter. That's going to happen. Spontaneous tongues where you never thought possible. In Jesus' name, right now. Take it right now. Take it right now. Take it right now. In Jesus' name. For my dear friend, Pastor Lunga. I thank you, Lord, for a wonderful friend who I have in, in him, Lord. I pray, Lord, right now over his future, Lord. 
over the church at Catford, Lord, over his life, over his bride, over his wedding, over his marriage, Lord, everything, Father, I just pray blessings, untold blessings. God is about to do something new in your life, something new within the church. There's going to be a new revival in Catford that God is just breaking through in every area of Catford. Those people who are against you will leave, and those people who are for you will encourage you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for this man of God who you've allowed me to be a good friend with, a brother in Christ, and I thank you, Father God. Lord, I consider him a deep, true friend, and I thank you, Father God, right now. Touch him, Lord, right now. Let the anointing of God just fill his life in every area of his life. Let the anointing be so strong upon him in the name of Jesus. Wherever he goes, Father, he sees signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You used to hold hands together. You used to hold hands. Father, I thank you, Lord, for these two children, Father. Right now, receive. Receive right now. Receive from God right now. Receive from him right now, both of you. Take the anointing that God is putting upon you right now. Receive it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Used to, she joined up as a partnership in writing music. Songs, new songs, not the old songs that you've been singing, but new words. God's going to give you musical ability to sing and to write music. He's going to open your mouth to words, like David the psalmist. He's going to give you psalms to sing in the name of Jesus. Start to collaborate together, because God has put you both together for a reason. I don't know what relationship you have with each other, but whatever it is, God is going to intense that relationship where you're going to write songs together in the name of Jesus. Receive that right now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you, Lord, for this lovely little baby. Right now, just pray blessings over this little baby's life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for his mother, Lord, in the beautiful baby that she's given birth to, Father. I pray right now for health and wealth over her, happy, over her and her husband. They'll know the blessings of God upon their life. Thank you, Lord, for this lovely young family. May you continue to bless them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. 